Welcome to Sailing Avanti. We are Gerard and Jacqueline sailing our 41 foot monohull Avanti around the world from Cape Town, South Africa. It's been very windy here the last like 24 hours. Um, so since we've returned from the inland, Santa Marta has gotten a lot more windy. We are expecting this wind to come like in December there's normally a bit of a change in the winds as we go deeper into the Caribbean winter. So yeah, we've had like uh, I think gusting over 30 knots last night. Very windy and very gusty here. I think the buildings in Santa Marta makes it especially gusty. So much so that we normally put our flip-flops on the dock and one of them actually um, was blown away. So Jackie lost one of her flip-flops. So the wind didn't bring good fortunes. And our visas are actually running out as well. So we've got about a week and two days left on our visas and um, the wind looks quite strong for the next few days. So we have to start picking a weather window to leave Santa Marta before our visas run out. So a little bit stressful to pick a, a date and make sure we don't get into trouble with immigration. While we wait for the weather window, we take a sunrise bus to Tyrona Park, but first we have a bus breakdown and transfer to the small minibus with 10 people. Although one was hanging out the window, we made it all in one piece. The park itself has a few entrances and we enter at Calabaso. We avoid the first two hour walk by taking a 20 minute death on wheels motor taxi and my grandfather would turn in his grave seeing us on the back of these motorbikes without helmets on. Once further into the park, we see some of the indigenous people walking on the roads. The Kogi, Konjuamo, Wiwa and Ariaku live in this park. The park does close for a few days a year for them to do their cleansing rituals and for the fauna and flora to recover. You are however not allowed to enter their living areas for any reason. The park actually only allows 6,900 people to enter daily. So by going late afternoon, one could actually be turned back. The park is massive and most people rather spend a night in one of the many eco-hotel, hostels or campsites. It's 15,000 hectares and is home to 770 different plant species, five species of cats that include the famous puma, 40 species of bats, 59 species of mammals that include monkeys, sloths and deer, 396 species of birds that include the purple macaw and 4 species of sea turtles, to name just a few. We can hear the howler monkeys in the background. So we've come quite early, so uh, the locals say we might see them. So let's hope they come down or they come closer to the walkway. And we're looking for a toucan.
we at last see some movement in the trees, and it's a monkey. Upon closer inspection, we see that it's a capuchin monkey, not the hala monkeys that we heard afar. Making our way back down to the beach, after being as high as 900 meters above sea level, we stumble upon a nude beach and keep going till we find a spot just for ourselves. The beaches are beautiful, with the mangroves coming almost all the way to the water. We have to keep up the speed, with the big distance we still have to cover before making it to the other gate. From strolling along the calm and pristine beaches, we had no clue of the path that was lying ahead of us. How far? I don't know, I can hear Ramon's voice, but I don't know how much more you can do I can it. take. Oh, this is gross. Yes. But we were sitting for a long time, we're walking now. Be honest, how is it? It's very not allowed to swear muddy. <laughs> and it's very deep! Ooh, ooh, I'm knee deep in mud! We make it to the most popular and most visited beach. You can also take a boat to this beach from another town instead of the walk through the jungle. The beach is filled with people, restaurants and a small tented area where you can spend the night. We just stopped in Cabo San Juan for lunch. Uh, it's a nice beach. Nice palm trees, but uh, ah, there's coconuts. This one is not good anymore. But yeah, the water is not really nice. It's uh, I think we are spoiled with Bonaire's clear water, so the water is murky, and it's not good to swim. There's a lot of people here today, so unfortunately we came on the weekend, so it is a bit crowded. But it's it was a really nice hike through like. Um, the jungle and yeah we're on our way back now it's a two to three hour hike back to get the last bus before it leaves by this stage we were all tired and not sure about the distance still to cover to get to the end and so a man with amazing negotiating skills convinced Harar that we should take the horses instead of the slow muddy walk to the gate Lean forward. Hey, smiling, hola. <laughs> hey. Feeling almost comfortable. <laughs> We've just finished our horse ride um, back from the beach. 
So when we were in uh, Medellin, my knee actually started hurting when we walked a lot, when we walked the Kokoro Valley. So um, yeah, it was actually fine for a week or so, but now today again it was um, starting to hurt when we go uphill or downhill. So we decided to take the horses and it's actually quite um, affordable, I think. There goes the moto taxi, but it's quite affordable. Um, it's about 120 rand per person for like an hour horse ride. And it's a two, maybe two and a half hour hike. So Ramon opted not to go for the horses. So we are waiting for him and at least they have beer here. But all in all, I think the experience today was quite expensive. It's quite a long hike or if you don't want to hike, you can take the motorbikes and the horses. Um, but it works out to be uh, quite a quite a few pennies and we didn't even have lunch we just had um, food that we bought at the supermarket so really nice to walk through the jungle the beaches were not that great but uh, overall i enjoyed the horse ride the most back and clean after that muddy experience um, the jungle was actually very nice I think um, but it is a big day 